If you're like me, birthdays are probably your favorite time of year. But I think I speak for a lot of people when I say that, sometimes, even better than getting an epic gift for your birthday is giving one. Because we've been in lockdown for more than a year, I wanted to do something really special for my dad's birthday. In this video, I'll show you how I made this augmented reality birthday card. And you should stick around until the end of the video where I'll show you how you can make one too with no coding required. But to understand how I made this, we need to flash back to around two weeks before the birthday. I was struggling to come up with what to make for it. Typically, I make a nice, long written card, but that's lame. So, like any reasonable person, I asked myself, what would the baby do? And that's when it hit me. He would probably say, let's go, and make an AR card. So, I did. If you don't know what AR is, it's a technology that makes things like Pokemon Go work. It's like virtual reality, but in the real world. My idea was to have some sort of physical marker that my dad would point his phone at and text and images would magically appear. Let's just say that it's much easier said than done. My first goal was to see if something like this existed. Now I'm sure there are some good products out there, but most of the ones that I found were really bad. Some costed money and others required mobile users to download an app for viewing. It was a mess. I wanted this to be web-based, so ideally anyone with a QR code could scan it and use the card instantly. But since I couldn't find a proper solution, I decided to make it myself. After all, how hard can it be? I began the way I do any project, by doing research. I scoured the internet for easy to use web libraries for AR. I wanted something that would work with a popular 3D framework too. At this point, I began suffering from a condition called Sanjitaitis. My mind started filling up with ideas about how I would make this. No longer did I just want to create a card for my dad, I wanted to make a full toolkit for making AR based cards. Yes, although I had increased the complexity of this project by tenfold, I thought that I would still be able to do it in the time frame. I looked through and tried several options for web based 3D and AR, but most of them were either really bad terribly documented or just straight didn't work. Eventually, after a few days, I narrowed it down to using 3JS through React 3 Fiber and a framework called Zapar for the AR. It took me about a week to actually start to appreciate how good Zapar really is, and it is severely underhyped. All of you guys should go start their GitHub repo and show them support for their great libraries. At that point, the AR was working with the text and image components. I wanted to go ahead and begin making the way people actually create cards. I set up React Router and created a very basic landing page with the Material UI. I needed a user account system and a database so I opted for Firebase. Firebase is known as a BAAS or Backend as a Service. The reason I wanted to use it was because I didn't really have time to build and find a place to deploy a free server somewhere to interact with. Yes, out of laziness, I added so much more stress. That's just the standard style, you know? Pretty soon, I had sign in with Google working and went on to creating a basic layout for the user dashboard. This was just a list of cards or projects. They can also add projects at the bottom. At this point, none of the buttons did anything and it was all dummy data, but the components were ready to be dynamic. Now, I needed to decide my database structure. Firestore represents storage in a similar format to JSON, so I thought the cards should have a list of objects. Objects each have a type, text or image, and a value. Value for text is a text to show, and for images, it's the image source. They also have position and rotation attributes. With my cards working in the dashboard, now came the annoying part. I had to make a 3D card modeling interface. I created a React 3 Fiber canvas and implemented the text and image components I had originally made for the AR. For aid in viewing, I added orbit controls and a very basic axis using dry. Afterwards, I did a UI overhaul on the editor and added a top bar and a permanent drawer. The drawer contained all the controls and a list of elements. At this point, development started to pick up as I got more familiar with the React, 3JS, and Material UI. Considering this is my first actual React project, I think it turned out pretty well. Soon, I was able to edit the elements positions in the menu. Initially, the plan was to just stop here, but I couldn't let my users down. It would be so much more convenient for them to drag something on the 3D representation of the object itself. Besides, how hard can that be to implement anyways? After three days of frantic googling, I finally got dry transform controls working and updating the parent states. 
At this point, we were on the final stretch of the editor. I just needed a way for the users to change objects, such as through editing and deleting. This editing menu totally didn't take a full day's worth of work to figure out. To wrap up the editor, I added rotation controls and made the project saveable and I was done. Finally, I needed to train a custom tracking image for the AR. This was two days before my dad's birthday, so it was crunch time. I drew up a logo in Illustrator and was ready to train a ZPT file through the Zapworks command line interface. Finally, I made the AR viewer actually fetch from the database and display the respective images and text. With that, the project was complete. In less than two weeks, I had built out an entire toolkit for managing, creating, and displaying augmented reality cards. That too, I did it without the aid of a custom server. However, there was one last thing to do. There would be no point in making this whole application if I didn't make a card for who it was originally intended for, my dad. If you'd like to follow along, go to acardfrom.me and create an account. In the dashboard, make a new card and begin adding objects. I'll add some text and images. Note that some images have trouble displaying at the moment, but I'm working on a solution. When you're satisfied with your design, press save and press print. Now, give this paper to the receiver and watch them scan and view their card right away. My dad really enjoyed the gift and loved seeing the interfaces I had built out. I really hope that you guys enjoy this too and use it to make other people happy as well. I'm going to end the video here, so let me know if you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. If you didn't, I guess that other button works too. Either way, subscribe for more content and see you in the next one. Bye!